In this video, we will talk about caching. A cache is a high speed data storage layer which stores a subset of data for faster access. The idea behind caching is to temporarily copy data to a location which enables an application or component to access the data faster than if we have to retrieve data from its primary source. So if we get the data from a cache, then we call it a cache hit otherwise it is a cache miss let's understand caching with the example of a web browser which all of us use daily whenever we visit a website for the first time the content is downloaded from the web server and it is saved to local repository which will be local browser cache so whenever we will revisit the website the content will come from the local cache rather than the server, hence speeding up the performance and loading time of the web page. In this way, the page content loads much faster into the browser. So this saves user time, it reduces network traffic and it minimizes the load on the web server. The page content on the local browser cache is stored for a specific period of time defined by TTL header which is time to live. TTL is an indication of how long content should be cached. You might have observed that whenever you clear your browser cache, all the pages load a bit slower for the first time. So by using caching, a web browser improves page load times, providing a faster experience to the end users. This type of caching is known as client caching because here the cache lies on the client side. Similarly, we can put a cache in front of a database. So databases often benefit from a uni uniform distribution of reads and writes across its different partitions. So some popular items can put a load on some specific partition leading to performance bottlenecks and scalability issues. So by putting a cache in front of a database, can help us to observe these loads and spikes in traffic. So in this model, the dispatcher will always first look for the data in the cache. Uh, it checks if the same request has been made before and it tries to find the previous result so that we can save actual execution time. So if data is not found in the cache, it will send the request to the worker pool where one of the worker will process the request, get the data from the database and return back to the client. And same data we will store in the cache so that future requests can be served faster. So this way we are able to speed up the performance and we are able to reduce the load on our primary database servers. So caching is present at multiple levels in the systems that we use and it helps to improve performance by providing faster access and reducing load on our primary servers and it assists in the scalability. And then there is another type of caching where we have where we use content delivery networks and we load the data into multiple proxy servers that are distributed geographically so that they can serve content to user from locations that are closer to end user, therefore speeding up the web application's performance. And then we have CPU caching. Most central processing units, CPUs include high speed caches such as L1, L2 and L3 that sit between computer's main memory and processor, therefore providing the CPU with faster access to program instruction sets then the main memory can deliver and therefore boosting the execution time. Now let's understand different caching strategies with the help of database caching. In database caching, we store frequently queried data in some temporary memory. So this temporary storage results in future requests for this data to be served up faster than is possible by accessing the primary database. A database caching strategy can assist our primary database by reducing the burden on it. So this is the most commonly seen by rewriting frequent read query to the cache itself rather than the primary database. The cache itself can either reside in the database application or it 
or it can be a standalone access layer. Since we can store only limited amount of data in a cache, so we need to understand different cache strategies and then decide which one works best for our use case. So the first cache strategy is cache aside strategy. So cache aside strategy is a caching architecture that positions cache outside of the regular path between application and database. Generally, any data which is being written will directly go to the database. The application is responsible for reading and writing from the stories. So the cache does not interact directly with the database in this case. So what application does in this case is it application will look up an entry in the cache. If data exists, it will read the data. Otherwise, it will result in the cache miss. So if data does not exist, it will load the data from the database and then store that entry in the cache as well so that the access is faster next time. So memcache is generally used in this manner. Subsequent reads of data added to the cache will be fast. So it is also referred to as lazy loading because we are only loading the data to the, to the cache when it is required. So in this case, always whenever a data is requested for the first time, it will result in a cache miss. And then we will load the data into the cache and subsequent reads will be faster. This strategy is useful for applications with read heavy load. In this case, data is being written to the database directly. Therefore, there is some period of inconsistency with the primary database in this case. Second caching strategy is read through caching strategy. In this cache arrangement, the cache sits between application and database. In this strategy, the application will always connect with cache for a read. And when there is a cache hit, the data is immediately returned. In case of a cache miss, the cache will populate the data from the database and then return that back to the application. For any data writes, the application will still directly go to the database. So these read through caches are also good for read heavy applications. The main difference between read through and cache aside is that in a cache aside strategy, the application is responsible for fetching the data and populating that in cache. But in a read through setup, the logic is done by some library or we can have some separate cache provider as well. A read through setup is similar to cache side in regards to potential data inconsistency between cache and database because we are still writing directly to the database. Third caching strategy is write through caching strategy. A write through caching strategy differs from the previously two mentioned strategies in the sense because instead of writing data directly to the database, we are writing data directly to the cache and then cache is responsible for writing data to the database. So what happens in this case is the application writes data to the cache and then cache will write data to the database immediately in a synchronous manner. So the benefit of this strategy is that the cache will always have the latest data. So if we are using only the write through caching arrangement, in this case, the disadvantage is that we will have a write latency because the data must go to the cache first and then same data is returned to the database. So it should happen immediately. So in this case, there are two writes which are occurring in succession. So the real benefit will come when we pair write through with a read through cache. That's how we can achieve more benefit out of this arrangement. So this way, this strategy will adopt all the benefits of read through caching strategy with the added benefit of having the latest data in the cache and therefore removing the potential for data inconsistency. The fourth caching strategy is write back strategy which is also known as write behind cache strategy. So write back works almost exactly the same as the write through strategy except for one key detail. So in write back cache strategy the application again rise to the cache only directly. However, the cache does not immediately flush the data to the database. The cache writes after a delay and it is asynchronous. So that the delay in cache to database can improve the overall write performance 
and if we are supporting batching then there is always a reduction in the overall writes and therefore this opens up some potential for the cost savings as well as reducing the overall workload however this delay opens up a door for potential data loss if the cache fails and some data from it has not been yet written to the database in that case we will lose the data and then fifth strategy is write around strategy in this arrangement the data is always written to the database and the application read the application will read from the cache only if there is a cache miss then the application will read to the database and then update the cache for the next time so whenever we are writing to the database so some entries in the cache will become stale because so the items in the cache related to the update will now be stale this method requires a way to invalidate those cache entries for subsequent reads so it will invalidate those cache entries for the updated items and therefore the next read for those entries will result in a cache miss and therefore loading from the database a write around caching strategy will be combined with either a cache aside or a read through for the maximum benefit also as we have only limited space in the cache so we can only keep some subset of data in this case so we need some mechanism to evict the data from the cache and there are different strategies for that such as least recently used LRU first in first out first in last out etc let me know if you want me to make a detailed video on cache eviction strategies so in summary in this video we have discussed about caching and its benefits we also discuss about basics of various caching strategies configuring a caching strategy that optimizes your cache and database workloads can have a major positive impact on the performance availability and scalability of your application that's all for this video hope you have liked this video please subscribe to stay tuned for more such videos thank you